The Tale of Despero by Kate DiCamillo, illustrated by Timothy Basil Ehring. Chapter 23, Consequences. There were, of course, dire consequences of Roscoe's behavior. Every action reader, no matter how small, has a consequence. For instance, the young Roscoe gnawed on Gregory the jailer's rope, and because he gnawed on the rope, a match was lit in his face, and because a match was lit in his face, his soul was set afire. The rat's soul was set afire, and because of this, he journeyed upstairs, seeking the light. Upstairs, in the banquet hall, the Princess P spotted him and called out the word rat, and because of this, Roscoe fell into the queen's soup, and because the rat fell into the queen's soup, the queen died. You can see, can't you, how everything is related to everything else. You can see quite clearly how every action has a consequence. For instance, if, reader, you will indulge me and allow me to continue this meditation on consequences, because the queen died while eating soup, the heartbroken king outlawed soup. And because soup was outlawed, so were all the instruments involved in the making and eating of soup soup, spoons, and bowls, and kettles. These things were collected from all the people of the kingdom of Dor, and they were piled in the dungeon. And because Roscoe was dazzled by the light of one match, and journeyed upstairs and fell into the queen's soup, and the queen died, the king ordered the death of every rat in the land. The king's men went bravely into the dungeon to kill the rats, but the thing about killing a rat is that you must first find a rat. And if a rat does not want to be found, reader, he will not be found. The king's men succeeded only in getting lost in the dungeon's torturous mazes. Some of them, in fact, did not ever find their way out again and died there in the dark heart of the castle. And so, the killing of all rats was not successful. And in desperation... King Philip declared that rats were illegal. He declared them outlaws. This, of course, was a ridiculous law. As rats are outlaws to begin with, how can you outlaw an outlaw? It is a waste of time and energy. But still, the king officially decreed that all rats in the kingdom of Dor were outlaws and should be treated as such. When you are a king, you may make as many ridiculous laws as you like. That is what being a king is all about. But reader, we must not forget that King Philip loved the queen, and without her, he was lost. This is the danger of loving. No matter how powerful you are, no matter how many kingdoms you rule, you cannot stop those you love from dying. Making soup illegal, outlawing rats, these things soothe the poor king's heart, and so we must forgive him. And what of the outlawed rats? What of one outlawed rat in particular? What of Chiaroscuro? In the darkness of the dungeon, he sat in his nest with a spoon on top of his head. He set to work fashioning for himself a kingly cape made out of a scrap of the red tablecloth. And as he worked, Old one-eared Botticelli Remorso came next to him, swinging his locket back and forth, back and forth, saying, hey, You see what comes from a rat going upstairs? I hope that you have learned your lesson. Your job in this world is to make others suffer. Yes, muttered Roscaro. Yes, that is exactly what I intend to do. I will make the princess suffer for how she looked at me. And as Roscoe worked and planned, the jailer Gregory held tight to his rope and made his own way through the darkness. And in a dank cell, the prisoner who had once had a red tablecloth and now had nothing spent his days and nights weeping quietly. High above the dungeon, upstairs in the castle, a small mouse stood alone one evening as his brothers and sisters sniffed for crumbs. He stood with his head cocked to one side, listening to a sweet sound he did not yet have a name for. There would be consequences of the mouse's love for music. You, reader, know already some of those consequences. Because of the music, the mouse would find his way to a princess. He would fall in love. And speaking of consequences, 
the same evening that Despero stood inside the castle, hearing music for the first time, outside the castle, in the gloom of dusk, more consequences drew near. A wagon, driven by a king soldier and piled high with spoons and bowls and kettles, was making its way to the castle, and beside the soldier there sat a young girl with ears that looked nothing so much like pieces of cauliflower stuck on either side of her head. The girl's name, reader, was Miggery Sow, and though she did not yet know it, she would be instrumental in helping the rat work his revenge. End of the second book.